Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the viewers at home on Channel 22 in Hampton. Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee for Tuesday evening, October 15th, 2019. I'd like to have Mr. Pluff lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce the members present, starting to my far left for the viewers at home. Introduce yourself. Barbara Kravitz, our administrative assistant. Ginny Bryder Russell, school board representative. Thank you. Joyce Scapertis. Rusty Bridal, selectman's representative. I'm Chairman Brian Warburton. Mike Pluff. Bob Ladd, village district representative. Stephen LeBranche. David Mara. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Henderson has been excused for this evening. Mm -hmm. So the first item of business we have is review and approval of minutes from September 17th. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Barbara. They're always timely out on the website, as all of us have gone to, so we've had plenty of time to review them. Uh, we'll go page by page. Any, uh, there are four page minutes. Anything on page one? Anything on page two? Page three. And page four. Motion to accept the minutes. So Moved by Mr. Pluff. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Capertis. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstained? Mr. Brido and Mr. Mara have abstained. Okay, for our appointment this evening, which is, has been somewhat customary in the last several years around this time to get ready for the budget season, we're very happy to have it with us tonight our Director of Finance, Christy Pulliam, who has sent us these great uh, monthly reports. They're also available out on the website under the finance area. And most recently today, she has sent us, and really glad to have her with us tonight, the nine months, what we call the nine month summary uh, ending September 30th, 2019. Welcome, Christy. Thank you. All right, I printed out copies. And yes, thank you. Those there, Brian. All right, would you like me just to go through and read through my summary like I do at the That would be of great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then any, we'll go around any questions. That would be super, but it really All right, looks so good. So I'll just start off and uh, read the summary, which I do every month at the um, yep. board. And like Brian said, they are on. The website under important documents and then finance, if anyone is ever looking for them. And they're always up there, usually simultaneously with me distributing them to the Board of Selectmen along with the Budget Committee. So this is the ninth month, as Brian said. The target is 75%. Under revenue, um, you'll see that the 2019 revenue remains higher than 2018. This has been the trend for the past several months. And it's higher by $488,600. The month's total income was 528513 Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 319621 Interest on taxes at $6,884. Building permits at 19588 Departmental income at 77,285, parking lots at $39,239, district court fines at $3,338, and the real estate trust at $55,080. On the expense side, you'll see that we are 70.15% spent or under budget by 1.2 million or 4.85%. In September of 2018, we were under budget by $67,560. If you look back over the past couple of years, going back to 2015, you will find that this amount ranges anywhere between $67,000 and $713,000. So we are high. Um, I'm gonna go through and kind of explain to you. I did a real, real thorough analysis of where we kind of were standing and looked 
very closely at a lot of the lines. Um, so I will just read through this for you and point out some of the things that I found in my review of them. Let's see. Um, it's important to remember that management tends to hold back on some spending until after the summer season is complete. This is especially true in years when we are operating under a default budget. When I reviewed the financials in detail, I made a few observations. One was that many of the electric line items are running significantly under the target. So I looked at that and I found that there's a, we're behind, the electric bills are behind one and two months depending on who um, the vendor is because we do some of our energy from consolidated um, as an energy source to cut down on the Unitel cost. So we have about $84,991 in electric bills that go through the end of September, estimated based on what we've been running for our average bills. Another large bill that was missing when the September financials were completed was for liability insurance, and that was $288,250. Some of the lines that you see running under target across the budget are repairs and maintenance lines, replacement equipment, vehicle replacement, tree maintenance, and new equipment, which goes in line with what I had said about management kind of holding back on spending in a year where expenses could be tight. Another observation made was related to many of the regular wage lines. These tended to be in areas where positions remain unfilled for a period of time over the course of the year. There are many reasons for this. It varies depending on the department and the situation. I know Public Works has been short a couple of positions that they haven't fill, been able to fill. Um, we were without a lieutenant retired and it took time to fill that position at police. So when you're down a body, that adds up quickly. Um, to help those lines to be underspent. I also want to point out that the career incentive and holiday line items will be paid out by the first payroll pay period in December. That's always one that we tend to talk about here because there's always zero dollars spent on it and everyone always wonders why. It's because contractually from the collective bargaining agreements, those items are paid by the first payroll in December. So the end of November, beginning of December, those will be expended. And lastly, at the last selectman's meeting, the board approved approximately $172,000 in projects from the general fund related to the Public Works Department. So that will also add to that 1.2 million. So we quickly added about 500,000 right there. So doing rough estimates, I would have said we would be under budget by about 710,000. So we're still under budget, but closer to the averages between like the 67,000 and the 713. So we're kind of in line with where we normally tend to be at this time of year. Um, then I just run through here, the general government section is 71.25% spent. Police department is at 68.34%. Fire department is at 72.54%. The building department is at 67.45%. Public works is at 65.34%. Parks and recreation is at 66.59%. The library is at 73.2%. Then on page 18, you can see the Warren articles and their expenditures. Uh, fund 24, which is the recreation fund, has a balance of $248,522, with $11,809 being awarded in scholarships so far this year. Fund 25, the cable committee, has a balance of $281,821. Fund 26 Private Detail has a balance of 258,352. Fund 27 the EMS Fund has a balance of $407,439. And the wastewater system development charges, the fees collected in 2019 total $58,770 with the balance um, in this account to, of $240,651. So that kind of summarizes what I would, what I will be presenting to the board. So don't watch on Monday night because I'll have a repeat. <laughs> um, but that kind of summarizes what, where we're at as of the end of September with a few caveats of things that have happened right at the kind of crossover there. Well, that's so. excellent. Um, I'm going to start over and start with Mr. Morrow and we'll go around. Anybody have any questions? David? Nothing at this time. Still a branch? Um, Christy. Have you heard from the DRA? How did I know someone would ask that question? Yeah. About 
because I assume by now that you've put everything in, correct? I have put everything in. So. I reached out to them today. She was actually out of the office, but she still replied. Mm -hmm. um, okay. She said that she is working. The Board of Selectmen has to sign the 535 for our audit mm -hmm. on Monday night. Um, that won't hold up the tax rate, and she okay. still needed to talk to the schools. I don't oh. know if she just needs to have a quick chat with them or what, but she did say that she still needed to reach out to the schools. So. I'm guessing within the next couple of days we'll hear more and know more. Okay, because I would have, I would have to think. That yeah, I, have, I didn't get to talk to her; she wasn't there. So yeah, I'd have to think that by next Monday night, the selectmen will want to approve the tax rate. I'm only guessing because they're only meeting every other week. No, so they're meeting again. They're meeting um, they the next the couple months? of weeks back to back. Correct, back Rusty? Back four to five weeks. Right yeah, for back -back. budget oh, reviews okay. and stuff. Okay. So because you, you know, that's we're in the middle of October and. I know they like to get those bills out by the beginning of November. Yeah. So, and, and she didn't mention about the village district. She did not in her email. Being back to me. Well, see, that's, me. I, that's good news. Thank you. She very didn't say much. anyone was to link it. She just said she still had to reach out to the school. She hasn't even talked to me yet to go over revenues. I submitted, um, you had to submit, the town at least had to submit their revised revenues revised by revenue. September 1st. Oh, yeah. Well, and they were done, but then they usually call and review them, and she hasn't reached out to me oh. to review those yet. Yeah. And I'm here a lot. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so, at least I feel like I am. But I have a, so we have to still do that too. She didn't mention that in her email, but I know for a fact that she. She always goes over revenues with me and okay. I haven't spoken to her yeah because I I never make that September 1st deadline because I made the deadline only because <laughs> because of because the, you're awesome yeah because of the packing lots and stuff correct after yeah the seafood festival yeah and she always Very allows the town to oh, yeah. readjust them at this time of year and I think that's exactly. probably would be my guess why she needs to talk to the schools because I Just know she usually sure reaches back out right. to the schools too to right. make sure that their revenues and nothing has changed. So that would be my best guess of why right. she said she needed to talk to the schools. So oh, she didn't say she was missing any documents. So Perfect. Good. OK, thank you very much. Yeah. So Lab. stay tuned for Monday. Maybe we'll talk about the tax rate. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Mr. Lab, <laughs> I just want to congratulate you. <clears throat> the amount of detail and the overview you presented at the beginning of the detail is really impressive. I hope the town appreciates the value you add to this community. Thank you. Mr. Pluff. No, nope. excellent. Mr. Brado. Nope. Christy always does a good job. Ms. Capertis. All set. Thank you. Mrs. Brado Russell. Good. Yeah. Just had, for the viewers at home, more or less a comment. So when you look under income, um, <coughs> it shows school resource offices and somebody would say well why does a show of income because we get paid from the school district to show in our because you know a lot of people aren't aware of that so that's money that comes back into the town so in looking at christy and excellent as well by the way i concur with my colleagues so the total revenues of 2019 are projected seven million six eighty four eight oh eight the actual as of september 30th five million nine sixty seven four sixty five so we're actually uh even better than we were at this time last year, right? Correct. Yep. And and I noticed the parking lots uh, revenue were up 122 percent. Yeah, I uh, think the last time I calculated, they were just over cusping on that ninety thousand dollar mark from like day to date. Of yeah. We were last year yeah, compared really to this good. year, just from the daily lots. That doesn't count like leases and stuff. Yeah, no, this is excellent. And just for my fellow board members, you want to use these reports uh, as we get into the, you know, and I hope you've all been reviewing them as we get into the actual budget review. This is excellent information. Very well laid out, um, showing, you know, what was encumbered, uh, the 2019 budget, the actual, what has been used, and certainly uh, uh, any open POs for 2019 as well as the available. So um, really, uh, R really uh, nice work. We didn't want to keep you too long tonight. Okay. I'm sure Great. people will be uh, digesting these. And thank you. We'll see you sometime in uh, November. Or yes. And on um, your budget summary sheets, will have the most up-to-date <coughs> expenditure Great. of where we're at, too, so you don't have to flip back and forth. So, thank like, you your so numbers much. you see there will be in your yes. budget summary. So. Excellent. Thank you so much, Christy. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Christy, have thank a good you. night. Um, hmm. I don't think we had any information requested. The... Um, We'll skip right into uh, the master plan committee update. Um, I've put that on the agenda pretty much every month since I was appointed um, as a member from the budget committee. And I have to say we've had uh, an excellent group of people that have met since June. 
Uh, and I'm going to a minute ask uh, Mrs. Kravitz, who's been an in instrumental member of this committee as well as our chair of the Rocky and Planning Commission, to add her thoughts. But we are on target. We, have, we meet here tomorrow night uh, to go over again any fine-tuned things that need to be in the update. We are going to be starting to talk about the <coughs> potential Warren article that will be put together. Uh, uh, that will be more... I would say more discussion will take place on that at our November 20th meeting because we'll have to get ready to do that. But just some amazing things that, that have come out of this and just learning in general why it is important to have an updated master plan. And I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised with what comes forth this year in the form of a warrant article, really spelling out uh, what is going to be needed as we move forward. We've worked with a lot of partners, uh, DES, Rockingham uh, Planning. One of the greatest things, and it's going to be a good segue into Mrs. Kravitz, is uh, Ann Carnaby and others have put together a survey, which is we're going to be discussing tomorrow night, which residents will fill out. It's, it's amazing. And really talks about vision. You know, what is this town? What do people want this town to be? Uh, you know, what interests them? What doesn't interest them? What is important to them? Um, Mrs. Kravitz, anything you want to add at this point? Because I know you've uh, been attending every meeting as well. Uh, the survey is almost ready to go. Yeah. Um, the meeting is uh, Wednesday. Yeah, tomorrow night. Tomorrow yeah. night. And uh, they'll go through the, the survey, uh, which will be online, and it will also be distributed in a few places in town. And the committee, including Brian and me, <laughs> Uh, will be assigned to uh, talk to boards, both public and private. I mean, any, yep. ranging from the Chamber of Commerce to this committee, yes. for example. And everybody's going to do their their uh, fair share of that. So um, it's been kind of fun, and that really is what we're trying to put together. The survey is preliminary, and it's meant to stimulate interest. The other thing we're going to be discussing tomorrow is uh, the form of RFP for consultants for the two, uh, for the vision and the, uh, uh, I would say climate control, the, the climate control, mm -hmm. uh, the coastal, the vision and the coastal uh, right. sec sections. And uh, for that, uh, the town's been awarded $45,000 for those two sections. Uh, and uh, right. so yeah. the RFP should be finalized tomorrow. Yeah, it's really good. And uh, we're moving along. We meet this on the uh, first Wednesday of the month we, is when we have the first part of the meeting. So it's gone very well. Looking forward. Great uh, Great updates, Mrs. Kravitz. Selectman's report, Mr. Bridal. She's starting to work on the budgets, and uh, we're working through them over the next few weeks. Yep. And we saw that. We had the police and fire last October 7th. Yep. It was a good uh, discussion at, at that, and I urge you all to watch the meetings as well uh, as we prepare for our uh, time. Um, Rusty, so October 28th, if I saw the schedule correctly, is when Public Works will come in. Correct. Uh, so I, and then any changes after that, any final change for me before we get the budget. So we're really looking at probably the first week of November at the earliest coming here, right? I would say, I would think that the next meeting after October 28th, it'll be kind of like our final review type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so we haven't, there haven't really been many changes. I mean, the budget is pretty tight. But still, uh, they came final. three, but we're going to, I'm sure we're going to have a final review on that. Thank you. That first meeting in November. Yeah, so just so that the budget committee knows, and, and I know Mr. Morrow was here, but I think I sent you an email, um, you can take out of your calendar October 29th and October 31st. Um, so that week we won't be commencing. Um, be on deck, as I will send you an email, as Mr. Bridal is formed. Uh, I would say, you know, November 5th is still a possibility, but we want to get the budget books you reveal. But definitely, I, I plugged a number of dates in, and I know... Mrs. Brower, Rusto, and Mr. LeBranch, Mr. Plupp, and Ron, if he is, that you know we've got a good amount of dates that we plugged in, so I think we're going to be in good shape. But you can take out that last week. We put it out there just mm -hmm. as a placeholder. We're not going to be ready to. We need a week to review. But thanks, uh, 
uh, Mr. Brado, for that. Uh, Mrs. Brado, Russell, uh, before uh, you give your report, I, I have to say I attended the open house on October 5th along, and I know Mrs. Scopertis and others were there. Um, I am so impressed uh, by that facility. I, I've got to tell you, I was just like, it was just unbelievable. And then the other thing you talk about, master plan in, in, a, in, a, in the same type of way, if you go through the academy, they have historical pictures from the various times in Hampton along the walls. Um, it, they, it's just the whole town got behind this, and the auditorium, the gymnasium. And, of course, you know, certain teachers that you know love the fact she's got three sinks in her science classroom now, so she's in seventh heaven. But i got to tell you, what a great program, uh, and you should be commended on putting it through. But I, I turn it over to you now, Jenny, because it was just absolutely wonderful. It was, and it was a great time, and the public was very much welcomed and appreciated, and we appreciated them coming. Unfortunately, from there, we get went into transition. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Lunny's moved on. He's now in the city of Portsmouth and in, in doing his job over there. Uh, Mariah Curtis has assumed the position of finance director and will be doing the financials for the budget, for the budget committee and for the school department. Yeah. Um, on our October school board meeting, um, Kathleen Murphy gave us the word that she would not be re renewing her contract. Mm -hmm. and that she would be done um, as of June 30th, 2020. In November, the school board will have to decide how to proceed from here, and that's what we will be doing, is deciding what our plan is. Mrs. Murphy has led this district for 10 years, along with Mr. Lunny, and they have brought forth the academy, <coughs> highly qualified t teacher status for all our teachers, They've kept the budget in line, and they've done a great job, and we appreciate the work that they've done, and we will truly miss them. Yeah, I, um, I first want to comment, and Ginny, thank you very much. And what Ginny had mentioned, she's done an excellent job yourself, Mrs. Brown Russell, and I mean that. You've been a great promoter and a great person. Um, December 3rd is going to be the Tuesday that the school yes. board is coming in, so that date is concrete. Um, I've also asked Mrs. Browder Russell and Ms. Uh, Kathleen Murphy, and I don't think it's going to be an issue, the November 12th school board meeting, the December 10th and January 14th, they will have their meetings <coughs> at the academy yep. so that we can have, we'll have our budget meetings here, and that's been good. Okay. I, I just want to comment because I feel that somebody who's been along in the community as I have and worked with folks, I, I absolutely concur with Mrs. Browder Russell. Um, Mrs. Murphy, so, you, so everyone knows here, is a highly qualified educator as well as administrator, very well respected in the state of New Hampshire and beyond. She will be missed. She was hired to do a job here in almost a decade, uh, has brought forth many great achievements, uh, not the least of which has been our infrastructure needs, as, as Ginny knows, with the schools, and we've always been pioneers behind that. Uh, and Mr. Lunny, too, uh, is, is an excellent business administrator. Those two positions will be hard to fill, and I, I, I certainly wish them the best. And, and just so you know, Kathleen will be here, as Jenny said, through June 30th, so we'll see her on December 3rd and at the, the public hearings. And the public hearing and delivery sessions both will be, uh, thanks to the school, will be at the, uh, the, the uh, new academy uh, renovation uh, building. But it is absolutely beautiful. We'll start over here. Any comments for uh, Mrs. Browder russell on the school board report or questions? Mr. LeBranch? Just thank you very much, Jimmy. Good job. And, and Kathleen and uh, Mr. Lang will both be missed very, very much, for sure. Mr. Ladd? I want to make a comment. On today's news, the city of Fall River announced it was building a high school. And it said the cost of that high school will be $300 million. <laughs> yeah, $300 million. <laughs> so uh, what you people did couldn't be done, but you did it. I am so impressed. I was skeptical when you announced you were going to put the <laughs> sixth grade in the Marsden School. You're going to have kids, you know, I guess out in a tent somewhere on Mars. And you were going to throw the superintendent's office out to uptown. Uh, and it worked. And it yeah. worked over time because many people cooperated. Uh, to me, it's, it's really sad, personally, that we're losing two of the instrumental forces that made this all happen. The superintendent basically was the midwife to start SAU 90. She brought it into existence. 
She nurtured it, and now it's become yeah. a highly respected upper-end school system in the state of New Hampshire. Can't say enough about Nathan. I mean, if you're going to have a numbers guy, right. he's the guy you want. He would be Nathan Detroit and Guys and Dolls. He, he made it all work, so congratulations. He did it. He brought it under budget, and Nathan has also agreed to do the finances on the academy until it's finished. So yeah, Nathan's in that. charge of that. Yeah. So. Thank you, Mr. Ladd. Mr. Pluff? Excellent. Yeah. Mr. Bridal? All set, thank you. Ms. Capertis? All set. Mrs. Kravitz, anything you want to add? Well, thank you. Great. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, it was, it was excellent. Now on to our Hampton Village District Report. Uh, Mr. Ladd. Well, the season from the recreation perspective is winding down. The only coming event will be New Year's Eve when we do the annual fireworks Iowa. show. And we will have some form of entertainment on the stage, which will be weather driven, obviously. We're in that part of the year where we're looking back over what we did, how to change it, how to supplement it going forward. And, and we are also very interested in the outcome of the committee concerning trash. Trash at the beach is probably the single most vexing issue the beach faces. Obviously, when the businesses are open, they create a fair amount of debris by being in business. They have no land, literally, to put a dumpster on. They have no place to park this trash other than in those barrels and have them removed as frequently as needed. The beach has been uh, recording just one award after another. We have become the crown jewel of New England, and it's recognized. Every week, some organization now submits to our marketing manager, John Kane some award recognition. Last week it was the Lawrence Eagle Tribune. Uh, a couple of months ago it was the state of New Hampshire State Park at the beach was uh, accorded the finest state park in New Hampshire. The Village District through uh, Yankee Magazine was recognized as the engine that made Hampton Beach the best beach in New England to visit seasonally. Eat your heart out, Nantucket. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of where we are now. Great, excellent. Any questions of Mr. Ladd? Is a report? Yeah, you've had a busy summer. You know, it, it's amazing the number of events that go on down there. Mm -hmm. And I've been to many of them, you know, and uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, people love, love it all. And, and the circus, I, I got to tell you, I mean, what did you say, 5,000? I, I said to somebody, I think it was like 10,000 people. Were there for that? Yeah, I, well, I was in the crowds, believe me, but yeah. very. Uh, <laughs> we hope to next year have this road shut down at the casino mm -hmm. so we can open it up a little better. Wow. Yeah, and we used to do, you know, a couple of at times, state parks, we had oh, yeah. that shut down right yeah. in front there. And oh, yeah. this being the first time we had, we yeah. had a sense there were a lot of people coming. Oh, yeah. It's, well, people, until it happened. Right. people love the events, so thank you uh, very much. Um, upcoming meetings, pretty much, and we'll go back to business minute, but upcoming meetings, so like I say, you can eliminate the week, last week of October, and we'll be following the selectman's lead, and mm -hmm. like I said, check your email, and mm -hmm. uh, it may be, you know, when to come get the books. It may be, as Mr. Brado said, if they meet the fifth, fourth, you know, next day will be ready, and then we'll start the following week. But I think, we'll, I, I think we're going to be in good shape. I really do, because I plugged in a lot of different... I think we had four or five in November, didn't we, Mike, anyway? So we'll be in good shape. So, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. We'll be fine. Um, anybody have any other new business, Mr. Mara? Nothing. Um, before I forget, Mr. LeBranch, we need an update. We always said we'd like an update on your Seabrook Hampton estuary. For some reason, Brian, I can't remember why, we weren't able to have our meeting as normal because we would have normally had it this afternoon from three to five. And I oh, don't remember the reason. There was there was a reason. Somebody couldn't make it. In any case, it's been changed. And I just want to mention if anybody can make this meeting. Bob will be there, of course, representing the village district. Yes. But um, I have a conflict. It's been changed to mon next Monday morning from 9 to 11 
right here in this room. Mm. Um, if anybody here wants to come and represent, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Did we have a alternate to me? I don't believe so. Okay, so they're just. I'll I'll get the minutes and I'll go through them. And if there's anything you know, we I can mention at the next meeting. How's that? That'd be that would be excellent. Okay, that's the best we can do. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Ladd, any new business? Yeah. Mr. Pluff. No. Mr. Bridal. Nope. Ms. Capertis? Nothing. Mrs. Bridal Russell? Nope. All right. So, <laughs> motion to adjourn at 7.30. All right. Um, Moved by Mr. Stand. Pluff, seconded by Mr. Ladd. All those in favor? All right. And you'll hear from me. Uh, thank you. You'll hear from me when we get going on. Thank you, Brian. Very good. Thank you.